Hello my painting class, this is Miss Nicole Spada and we're going to be going over some glazing techniques and how to use them. There are going to be several questions that I want you to answer. There's going to be some in the very beginning and then at the end of the video. Please, at any point you need to pause the video to find the actual answers to the questions. That's fine by me. That's the great part about video. You get to do this at your own pace. What's also nice about this flipped atmosphere is that you actually get to be in my studio space, which is very interesting. So here are the first four questions, okay? Write these in your notebook and answer them, please. So we have, how does glazing change the appearance of color underneath it? What is the difference between glazing with oils and using acrylic paint? Three, what type of oil paint pigment should be used for glazing? Four, define optical mixing. How is it achieved? Okay, so now we're going to watch a little bit of the video and you're going to look for some of the answers here. Okay, here's a little brief introduction about glazing. Please take notes. In this video lesson, you will discover the method of oil painting, which is essential to the traditional oil painting technique. It is called glazing. In Europe, the method of glazing was used and perfected from the 14th through the 19th century. The majority of masterpieces done by the great masters feature glazing layers. It was a very important technique, and every fine artist of that time knew and used it. In this video lesson, you will find out what glazing is, why it is so important for the traditional oil painting technique, and how you can use it. Before okay, so now I just wanted to make sure that you know that we're at Web Art Academy, if some of you need to go back. Okay, now we're going to scroll through and find some of those answers. Are you ready? Glazing topic. Glazing in oil painting is the technique of applying very thin and transparent or semi-transparent layers of oil paint over the dry surface of a painting. Glazing is used to enhance, change, or deepen the colors of the painting. The glaze is a transparent or semi-transparent layer of paint, which is thinly spread over the top of a dry oil paint surface. When light penetrates through the top glaze layer, it reflects from the surface of the layer underneath and bounces back so the viewer can see that layer. As transparent glaze has its own color, it changes the appearance of the lower layer. The color of the painted surface becomes deeper and richer. Such reflected light through one or more transparent glazing layers can produce some light diffusion and glow. The glazing technique is a very laborious and slow process. However, the results which it provides are not achievable by any other means of oil painting. The full benefits of glazing layers are achieved in oil painting. Acrylic, for example, would not provide the same benefits. Not every oil paint is suited for glazing. Those paints that are transparent or semi-transparent are best suited for glazing. Opaque paints have strong covering properties and therefore can be used with caution, if used at all, for the purpose of glazing. The glazing method is based on the ability of colors to mix optically and change their appearance when two or more colors are applied. The knowledge of optical mixing of colors cannot be underestimated here. When one color is covered with another layer of transparent oil paint with a different color, the hue changes its appearance. This appearance is not achievable by physical mixing of oil paints used. Very complex and deep colors can be achieved in this way. It takes some knowledge and experience to predict these results. Glazing method is used for several purposes. It is used to change the chroma, value, and hue of colors. It can deepen the color tones add a visual depth to the painting, change the texture of the painting to a glossy surface, unite various color patches in one harmonic range, soften up edges and contours. Usually glazing layers are used to finish the painting. In the previous Web Art Academy video on the topic of underpainting, dead colors and grise, we described the methods used by the old masters to start the painting. Some of the old masters were using glazing on top of underpainting or dead colors. Others would continue the painting with body colors before finishing it with glazing. White paints are not used for glazing purposes. That is why the glazing process always goes from light tones to dark tones. Every glazing layer is applied after a previous layer is dry. Drying time depends on the thickness and type of oil paint, as well as the oil medium used in the glaze. Usually paints are diluted with mediums to increase the transparency of the glazing layer. The glazing technique is often used for portraying the complexity of skin tones. Human skin, for example, is not 100% opaque, so flesh and blood under the skin gives the complexity of the skin's colors. Such skin effect rendering can be achieved by the glazing method. 
The great masters sometimes used cold colors for the underpainting of figurative artworks. Such cold colors underpainting is often called the dead layer. When finishing portraits in warm glazing, artists were able to mix optically cold and warm hues, getting very realistic skin rendering otherwise not achievable by mixing paints on a palette. When multiple layers of glazes are used, the color of each layer will contribute to the overall gamut of the painted surface. A fine artist can use several glaze layers. The number of layers depends on a particular creative task, as well as the personal preference of the artist. Every time a new glaze layer is applied, the painted surface's appearance is changed. The pigments of paints are not intermixed because the previous layer is dry before actually applying a new one, but the glaze colors contribute to the colorful gamut optically. As for any multi-layer oil painting technique, the glazing method must be used according to the fat over lean rule. To minimize cracking of the painting surface, every new layer of oil paint needs to contain Hi guys, so here is part two of the video. I want you to answer the next four questions. Um, in this next section of the video, we're going to hear about artists and how they particularly use the glazing methods. And here are the next four questions. Name, name four glazing method purposes. And why does one add medium to the pigment? Number seven, why does one add more medium or oil as you continue to paint on the surface? And that was addressed. And lastly, name one artist from the film and describe their glazing technique. Okay, so let's go back to the video now. And I want you to pay attention to those questions. And please write down any questions master? you have for me. ...who developed the oil painting method with use of glazed layers was Jan Van Eck. This discovery gave a big advantage to oil painting over the old tempera painting. With glazing, it becomes possible to depict the smallest variations of colors and tone gradations, which was the revolutionary invention at the time. Never before had the world seen such vibrant and defined colors produced by artists. Other artists of North Renaissance, like Roger van der Weyden, Hugo van der Goes, Hans Melming, and Peter Bruegel, the elder, were developing glazing painting methods even further. From the Netherlands masters, the glazing method was then passed on to Italian fine artists. The Italian method was as follows. After transferring a drawing on the painting's support and outlining it in paints, it was glazed in several layers, first in cold colors, then in warm colors, which were required. Sometimes, the white ground of the canvas or board was covered with a thin, flesh-colored imprimatura layer. The painting method of the small Dutch pictures of the 17th century often featured a cold, gray background, which was partially visible through many upper layers of glazing. The old masters were always paying great attention to the clarity of glaze. The old masters were always paying great attention to the clarity of glaze layers. Thick impasto layers came into use at a much later time. The Flemish fine artists of the 17th and 18th centuries were using red and brown grounds for their paintings. Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, 1573-1610, was one of the fine artists to use dark, almost black grounds. Later on, academic painters were combining thick layers of body paint with upper layers of glazing. Lights were painted in thick, opaque paint mix, or sometimes in glazes over a white underpainting. Shadows were painted over neutral tones. Such complicated painting methods, Italian term pentimenti, provides great flexibility and is based on the revealing of a painting, or part of a painting, that has been covered over by later layers. The glazing technique is suitable for many genres of oil painting. However, in portraiture, it works particularly well because transparent glazed layers depict human skin realistically and believably. Glazing is also well suited for cases when a colorful gamut of an artwork needs to be united in a certain hue direction. For example, a still life object may have many colors and all those different colors visually divide this object. So to bring it together, the fine artist may apply one or several layers of glazing to unify the common shape of the object. And that is how we're going to use the glazing method when we do our still lives. I want you to pay very close attention on how you can glaze paint to unify the entire painting as a whole. Thank you very much, and I look forward to answering any of the questions you may have, okay, in class tomorrow. And I just wanted to make sure that we knew that this was Webcam Academy. Thank you again. Hi guys, so here is part two of the video. I want you to answer the next four questions. Um, in this next section of the video, we're going to hear about artists and how they particularly use the glazing methods. And here are the next four questions. 
Name, name four glazing method purposes. And why does one add medium to the pigment? Number seven, why does one add more medium or oil as you continue to paint on the surface? And that was addressed. And lastly, name one artist from the film and describe their glazing technique. Okay, so let's go back to the video now. And I want you to pay attention to those questions. And please write down any questions master? you have for me. ...who developed the oil painting method with use of glazed layers was Jan Van Eck. This discovery gave a big advantage to oil painting over the old tempera painting. With glazing, it becomes possible to depict the smallest variations of colors and tone gradations, which was the revolutionary invention at the time. Never before had the world seen such vibrant and defined colors produced by artists. Other artists of North Renaissance, like Roger van der Weyden, Hugo van der Goes, Hans Melming, and Peter Bruegel, the elder, were developing glazing painting methods even further. From the Netherlands masters, the glazing method was then passed on to Italian fine artists. The Italian method was as follows. After transferring a drawing on the painting's support and outlining it in paints, it was glazed in several layers, first in cold colors, then in warm colors, which were required. Sometimes, the white ground of the canvas or board was covered with a thin, flesh-colored imprimatura layer. The painting method of the small Dutch pictures of the 17th century often featured a cold, gray background, which was partially visible through many upper layers of glazing. The old masters were always paying great attention to the clarity of glazed The old masters were always paying great attention to the clarity of glazed layers. Thick impasto layers came into use at a much later time. The Flemish fine artists of the 17th and 18th centuries were using red and brown grounds for their paintings. Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, 1573-1610, was one of the fine artists to use dark, almost black grounds. Later on, academic painters were combining thick layers of body paint with upper layers of glazing. Lights were painted in thick, opaque paint mix, or sometimes in glazes over a white underpainting. Shadows were painted over neutral tones. Such complicated painting methods, Italian term pentimenti, provides great flexibility and is based on the revealing of a painting, or part of a painting, that has been covered over by later layers. The glazing technique is suitable for many genres of oil painting. However, in portraiture, it works particularly well because transparent glazed layers depict human skin realistically and believably. Glazing is also well suited for cases when a colorful gamut of an artwork needs to be united in a certain hue direction. For example, a still life object may have many colors and all those different colors visually divide this object. So to bring it together, the fine artist may apply one or several layers of glazing to unify the common shape of the object. And that is how we're going to use the glazing method when we do our still lives. I want you to pay very close attention on how you can glaze paint to unify the entire painting as a whole. Thank you very much, and I look forward to answering any of the questions you may have, okay, in class tomorrow. And I just wanted to make sure that we knew that this was Webcam Academy. Thank you again.